Hey, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to set up your own custom PyTorch data set so you can read your data into memory, chunk it up into batches, and send it off to your models for training. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and import our library. So I'm gonna go ahead and import pandas, import torch, PyTorch, import torch vision, and then from torch.utils.data, we're gonna go ahead and import the data set class as well as the data loader class. All right, so for this example, I'm gonna walk you through a simple image classification example where we're gonna go ahead and load in our training CSVs as well as our validation CSVs, which holds our paths to our training data as well as our validation data. Read those into Pandas data frames. Then we're gonna load those into our PyTorch data sets, a custom data set, which we then feed to our PyTorch data loader, which is then used to feed our models for training. So first thing I'm going to go ahead and define is config. So what I like to do is I like to actually create config files. Usually I store them as key value pairs in JSON files, and then I add them as some sort of command line argument whenever I launch my training jobs that'll read in the config parameters and then apply them to my training job. So here's things you're going to want to, here I'm going to keep it pretty simple, but in general you can add different types of training parameters to your config file. Um, but here we're just going to go ahead and pass our train um, training data set as well as our validation data set, which is stored in CSV files. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and want to define your data reading functions. So since this is a image classification task, what we're going to want to do is define our read image functions, which turns our image paths, which are just strings into actual um, tensor data, right? So I'm going to go ahead and assume that we're going to be using just simple um, JPEG or PNG images. So we can go ahead and leverage the PyTorch built in read image functionality, go ahead and pass our path. And here I'm also going to go ahead and scale it by 255. Get our values between a zero and one, assuming that these are unsigned integer eight values. So the reason why I like to define my own data reading functions is because sometimes you might run into instances where you have to define your own reading functions, right, or your own your own types of functionality. So a good example is if you work in the geospatial community and you want to use geotiff images. Uh, PyTorch doesn't have any built-in functionality to deal with geotiff images, so you'll have to define your own functionality, which you can then use as your own read image function and pass to your custom data, custom data set. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and define our custom data set class. We're going to go ahead and inherit from the PyTorch data set. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize our class, pass itself, config. We're going to initialize train is equal to true, and then transform is equal to none for the moment. So then we're going to go ahead and define our self.data frame is going to equal to pd.readcsv. And then we want it to read config train. We want to read in our train, C, train ROIs or train, train examples. If, oops, if train, if train is false, so else we want to read in our validation CSV that is config val. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and define self.transform is equal to transform. So again, our transform is gonna be any type of transformation functions we wanna to apply to our data, um, which we'll get to here in a minute. Okay, so the next method we're gonna to have to define is length. So go ahead and pass self. Here we're gonna go ahead and return the length of self dot data frame. So basically what the PyTorch data set or custom data set needs to know is it needs to know how many samples there are in our data set. So obviously if we read in our data frame, then it's gonna have all of our samples. So just grabbing the length of it, it's gonna let our data set know how many samples it's representing. It needs to know that so that when it goes ahead and samples from itself, it knows how many samples there are to sample from. I had a spelling error up here, go ahead and fix that. Okay, the next method we need to define is get item. So the data set needs to know what is it supposed to do when it does sample from itself. How do you read one of the items of our data into tensors, into the format that our models expect, right, which is tensors. So we're going to go ahead and define item, and then the value being passed is index. So 
following the PyTorch um, documents, we're going to go ahead and put this little bit of code, which is if torch.is tensor of our index, then we're going to go ahead and set index equals to index.toList. So this is going to return us our index value now. And now we can go ahead and create a sample. So I'm choosing to return my sample as a Py or as a Python dictionary. And I'm going to go ahead and create the key value pair of image. And then I'm also going to go ahead and create the key value pair of label. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and return from my get item function. Okay, so let's go ahead and define our image. So we're going to go ahead and call our read image function. We're going to go ahead and index our data frame at the index. So we're going to call i, I location of the index being path passed. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the path column at that location. So in my particular CSV, I had all of my image paths saved under the column of path. Yours might be different. You'll just have to go ahead and look and see how you structured your data. Okay, and then we're gonna go have to go ahead and grab the label for that particular image as well. So we're gonna go ahead and index the data frame again, but this time we don't have to read the data because it's already saved in the data frame. We're just gonna go ahead and access the label. So now we have a Python dictionary representing our sample. Okay, so now is where we're gonna go ahead and if self doff transform, so if there are any transformations that need to be applied, then we're gonna go ahead and apply those to our sample. The only thing to keep in mind here is since this is your own custom data set and you're dictating how these, this information or this data is being returned. In my particular example, I'm using a Python dictionary with the key value pairs of image and label. Any of my, all of my transformation functions should expect and should be able to handle a Python dictionary as input and they should be looking for these exact same key value pairs. So if they want to apply some sort of transformation to the image, they need to be looking for the, the, the key for image and then same for the label. Just another thing to keep in mind that when you're creating these new custom data sets, you also need to make sure that your any types of other downstream tasks or downstream functions need to be able to anticipate and expect what you're creating your sample as. And then we're gonna go ahead and return the sample. So now we've defined our custom data set function. We have our get item uh, method, which calls the functionality to read our data into actual tensors and, and into the format that our models expect. The next thing we need to do is just go ahead and create our data set object. So we're gonna go ahead and create a train data set object. We're gonna call our custom data set. I'm gonna pass config is equal to config. And then I want this to be a train one. So I'm gonna set that equal to true. And then if I had any transformations, I would be able to apply them here. You can go under the transforms.compose. And essentially what that allows you to do is it allows you to chain a string of transformations to your input data. You could either do one, one transformation or multiple transformations, it strings them to them and it applies them to them as um, the data set is sampled. Okay, so now we have our train data set object. We need to go ahead and make our train data loader. So go ahead and create that object. So call the data loader class. We're gonna pass our training data set. And then here you can specify certain, certain parameters such as batch size, which I'm gonna set equal to 16. I'm gonna go ahead and set shuffle equals to true. What shuffle is doing is whenever you're training a model, what essentially it does is it runs on epochs, right? So one epoch will be one iteration through the entire training data set. What shuffle does is it the next epoch makes sure to shuffle the entire data set randomly so that the next epoch doesn't have the data fed to it in the exact same order as before, thus mitigating certain biases that might occur. And then another parameter that's pretty useful is num of workers. I'm gonna go ahead and pass that equal to two. So essentially what's happening here is passing the num workers allows the data loader to load in batches of your data in parallel using multiple workers while data that's already been loaded into memory is being used to train the model. So one of the things you want to avoid is you want to avoid bottlenecks in your training, right? You want to make sure that your model always has data to train on and that the data is being processed and pre-staged and loaded and can continually be iterated through so that everything is done efficiently and that you're constantly using compute to train the model. Okay, so that kind of actually pretty much wraps everything up. Um, if you have any more specific um, questions or, or um, need to want me to walk through any different specific 
examples. You can go ahead and leave your own particular problems or own particular examples in the comments below and I can go ahead and see if I can get to them and walk through and maybe write some code to deal with those particular problems. Um, also, if you don't want to leverage some of my knowledge, you can go ahead and I'll leave a link in the description below um, to the docs on PyTorch that go through how to set up and iterate through the custom data set and how to set up your own for your own particular problem. Um, also, so if there's any other types of problems outside of this, right, that are in, you know, maybe mathematics, computer science, data science, machine learning, AI, deep learning that you want me to dive into, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll see if I can make a video on it. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed. Go ahead and leave a like if you did, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.